Welcome back to the Frayed Brush. I'm Big Aaron. <clears throat> We're actually getting back to some painting today. Pretty excited about that. <clears throat> um, some of you might recognize the uh, Shield Maiden. I showed on a short, uh, actually, video not too long ago. Um, at the time, she was primed with some uh, Stano Res neutral primer. However, I've started watching a lot of uh, a painter named Marco Frizzoni. Uh, his, his channel is not just make on YouTube. Um, and I'll go ahead and throw the link to his channel down in the description below. <clears throat> He's got a lot of cool things going on there. Excellent painter. Just mind blowing. So uh, once you get done doing me a solid and subscribing to my channel and hitting the, the bell icon to get notified and hitting that thumbs up for this video. <clears throat> Head over to his channel. Go ahead and, and throw him a subscribe if you can and be sure when you go there, leave a comment, let him know uh, the frayed brush sent you over. Tell him, uh, tell him come holler at Big Aaron. <clears throat> so one of the things he did that caught my attention was he, he's working on a bust currently. It was one of his live stream, the most recent live stream he did, I believe. And he's doing a bust, <clears throat> and excuse me, and he started painting it in a Verdaccio style. And I'm not, I don't know a lot about the history of Verdaccio or anything like that. But what I do know is that a lot of the uh, old artists, uh, a lot of the greats, would use a green as an undertone for their skin tones. And it looks really interesting. And I happen to have the colors he used. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give Verdaccio a try. And <clears throat> I went from the Stino Res Neutral Primer. Uh, I went over it with um, black Stino Res. And then I hit it with some uh, gray ink. And then hit my highlight spots that I wanted to with some uh, white ink. And you can tell a little bit where I hit the, the highlight spots, um, but there's, you know, there's the, the black and, you know, then the gray, then the, the white highlight spots. And it's similar to a uh, Zenithal Prime, but I didn't follow the, the degrees of angle that I usually follow with a uh, Zenithal Prime. So the no, um, this will be using an airbrush, so I'm not sure how loud that'll be on the video. I don't think it'll be too bad but I've never used my airbrush that often really, except for priming. This is one of the very few times I've ever run color through it. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how that goes. Uh, Marco did recommend using a 0.2 needle, I believe. He uses an Awada airbrush. I'm not exactly sure what kind, but I use Badger airbrushes. Uh, for this, I'll be using the Badger Patriot 105, and the closest I could get to it was their uh, black tip needle, which I believe works out to be about a 0.33. So I did use that for the gray and the white, and it is significantly different than using their uh, blue tip needle, which I believe is a 0.5, I think. <clears throat> so let's get started here and see what we can come up with. The first color Marco uses to lay down his green is actually a contrast paint from Citadel and it's Plague Bear Flesh. So we're gonna get some of that loaded up in the airbrush here, hopefully. Hopefully it's not all gunked up. We'll see what happens. Hey, we're good, I think. I don't know, I've never airbrushed contrast before, so we'll see what happens. Let me grab a paper towel real quick. We'll uh, see how it goes. All right, hopefully you'll be able to hear me over the airbrush and uh, we're just gonna, gonna get started. There are some mistakes along the way, we'll, we'll figure it out. There's nothing that can't be Redone. I'm 
really this is all we're going to do, just move around here and get some green laid down. And you know, it's one of those things, if we don't like it, we can paint over it. Everything we're using right now is really, really thin layers and a thin consistency of paint. You'll actually be able to keep seeing the differences in the primer. Whoop, that was a little heavy. Through the, uh, the differences in the primer through the green. And as Marco puts it, this is a fake Verdaccio. And I'm fine with that. I've had the airbrush for the while and I would like nothing more than to uh, get better with it. Um, he didn't thin his any. Um, I don't. I don't know if that's deafening on the video or not. But my, uh, I'm sure I have uh, friends and family out there that will let me know if it is. And this is really just laying the groundwork for the for the skin. Um, this isn't final. This isn't final coats or anything like that. I mean, it will improve, hopefully. Um, that really looks a lot more broken up on camera than it does in person. Um, like, especially right in, in this area. On the camera, it looks like there's almost like nothing there, but it's, it's fairly covered. Um, on the the model actually see if there's some more there and we're not worried about if we get some overspray or anything like that this is all you know initial coats so we know how that we know how that goes, so don't scare to be messy. Actually looks like some, some red tint to it all right so we'll get this cleaned out real quick And just to clean out the airbrush, all I really do is spray some, some water in the cup and kind of swoosh around a little bit. And then I'll uh, pour out the excess water because I don't want to push a bunch of water through the, through the, uh, through the airbrush. Um, so then a little bit of water and whoop, it's all cleaned out. Good to go. Okay, so the next thing he does is he, he, he starts working back into the inks and he uses a, uh, a transparent burnt umber, okay? One thing he did recommend, though, was using some matte varnish with it because inks will actually uh, dry glossy. So we'll add a little bit of 
Whoop. I don't know how much that was, but it's good enough. And then we'll uh, open up the ink here, maybe. There we go. And we'll add some of this a little bit more. All right. Now, I'm fairly certain that's way more than what I'm going to need. But that's why you get so much at one time, I guess. Now, one thing I did learn from him for sure was a pipette. He's, I've seen people that'll, you know, uh, you, you don't, you don't ever, I recommend not ever mixing colors in your airbrush. Uh, this isn't really mixing a color because this is more of an additive with an ink. So it's keeping same color. We're kind of just knocking down the shine a little bit. But you'll see people, they'll, you know, put stuff in their cup and, smash a brush down in there, mix it around, or, you know, they'll cover up the end and, and backwash it in there a little bit. And, you know, then you'll have other people that will actually get a cup and, you know, mix in the cup and pour it into the airbrush. But this little trick I really liked. So basically, you just want to sit here and work the mixture back and forth into the pipette a little bit. And it actually pulls the paint and the varnish out of the uh, mixing chamber inside the airbrush where it mixes by air and gets everything all good and mixed up. So thanks, thanks for that tip, Marco. All right, now what we're gonna do with this is first, make sure it's coming out good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Now, this is going to go kind of in the shadow areas. Now, here is where my airbrush skill will show that I have a lack of it. And we basically want to try to get this mixture with the airbrush into all the shadow areas. So, what we'll do, we already know that the light's coming from this direction. Okay. From like up in front because she's going to be facing this way on the table okay because this is the this is the piece i'm doing for ReaperCon, so it's it's cool if we make mistakes we, we got time to fix them so what we'll do we'll start on this side up around the cheek area and where her ears at so we can kind of get a good feel for the airbrush without it really affecting you know a lot of other things Okay, well, that was totally not what I wanted to do. But it's cool, it's in the shadow. Get around the hairline a little bit. This is good. This is gonna be in shadow, so because of the way she's turned, and there will be there will be brushwork going going over top of this. So it, this isn't the 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 be all end all. Um, this, so. We'll be able to uh, fix anything we we don't do correctly, hopefully. Oh goodness. Okay, yeah, that was a lot, so let's just Yeah, well let's put a brush over that. That was quite a bit. Uh alright, so. to get all the way inside her ear without making a too big of a mess so mm. 
this is not... Alright, so I guess, you, you know, the only way to get better with the airbrush is to practice, so hey. We're definitely getting our practice. He said he, he said he, some of the same around about 40 PSI. Um, I think that is a little too high pressure for me, but we will, we'll see what happens. Now, she's got the big shield behind her, so... This hand, kind of the whole thing is in shadow, but you won't necessarily be able to see the whole thing, so we're just gonna hit the top of it real quick. All right, so, well, it looks like a hot mess right now, but, ooh, especially right there, that looks bad. Okay, that's all right. We'll uh we'll get it, and uh, we'll see what happens with it. You can't kind of. It's working a little bit, I guess. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I feel about it right now, but hey. All right, now what we'll do we'll we'll call that one for now, and we will clean out the old airbrush. And then we're going to move on to the uh, last ink, I think. Um, she's going to be kind of half in shadows, half skin, maybe. So next we're going to move on to magenta. All right, magenta ink. And spread that out real quick. Again, we don't want it shiny, so we'll throw in some throw in some matte medium. We don't need nearly as much because as we transition into different uh, colors of ink, the area gets smaller and smaller. So, let's do that. We kind of did five and five. I'm not quite sure how to work out, but we'll see. There's definitely nothing wrong with uh, painting bravely and testing yourself and doing things that you've never done before. And that's exactly what we're doing here today. And, you know, if we don't like it, we'll try something else. And if we like it, then we learned a new skill. But you'll never know till you break past that barrier and start to paint bravely. So, all right. So let's get this last color put on. Let's see how it sprays, make sure we're not clogged up or nothing. All right, we're good. Okay, so now, let me see. So the object is to be able to make, kind of, not necessarily a small dot, but be able to do a small pattern. And that's, that's pretty small. We'll see how it goes. So now what we want to do is take this magenta and kind of put it in between the the brown and the the green because red and green are you know complementary colors. So let's see let's see how we do. Well, that was not good. All right. What the hell is going on? All right, hold on. I just had a bunch of water come out of my airbrush, so let's get that dried off real quick. One of the beautiful things about a dual action airbrush is you can have air or paint or both. So let's get this dried up a little bit here. Oh my goodness. Hold on, let's clean that tip out a little bit before we just get getting all crazy. Mm 
No, there we go. Yeah, there's a little bit of water in the end of the airbrush here. And I know some people would die if this happened with their airbrush, so. There we go. I think we're good now. I'm gonna hit it with the air a little bit more just to make sure it's dried off. All right, so. There we go, let's see if we can get some paint on there. Oh, goodness. All right, so I think until we get this process perfected and I get some more control over the airbrush, I think this might be left better to some brush work. Um, so my, my, my wife will be happy to know I'm not going to, to strip this. I'm just gonna go over it. Um, I think it's definitely recoverable. Um, so next video we'll do um, if I don't already have some of the face done, wow, that looks horrible. Um, if I don't already have some of the face done, we'll, uh, we'll hit up those skin tones with a brush and, uh, see what kind of damage control we can do. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll be linking, uh, Marco from Not Just Make a down below. Uh, be sure and subscribe. Hit that bell icon for notifications. Hit that thumbs, thumbs up for the video. It's all greatly appreciated and helps out. And remember, when you go check out Marco's channel, uh, be sure and tell him the Frayed Brush sent you. And uh, again, this is Big Aaron. Hope everyone has a great day. And remember, never be scared to tell him Big Aaron sent you.